They say, how have we despised your name? He said, you are presenting defiled food upon my altar. But you say, how have we defiled you? And in, in that you say, the table of the Lord is despised. He said, they said, we never said that. We never said the table of the Lord was despised. We would never do anything like that. We're good Christian people. We would never say the Lord's not number one. We would never say that this or that is more important than God. We would never say that. He says, you say it, not with your mouth, but with your life. He says, you say it this way. But when you present the blind for sacrifice, is it not evil? And when you present the lame and sick, is it not evil? What does He demand from us? Everything. I know about these silly little evangelists that say, give me your hand and give Jesus your heart. I know about these silly little preachers that say, come forward and pray this prayer, it only take five minutes. They're lying to you. This is what it'll cost you. Your life. Your life. Jesus promises you two things. A cross to die on and eternal life. He's everything or He's nothing. The saddest place on the earth is the biblical south where everyone has just enough to religion to send them straight to hell to soothe their religious conscience and not know that they're despising the Lord and that they have so many idols in their life that the Lord is not even first or second or third or fourth it is not giving unto the Lord everything everything what would you have me to do, O Lord? Teach me your ways, O Lord. Who do I have in heaven but Thee? Who do I have on earth but Thee? What am I but a speck of dust, breathing holy breath, if indeed you have converted me? How then shall we live, was the question of Francis Schaeffer. Knowing who He is, what we were in our filth and our sin, what He has done through the cross of Jesus Christ, and what discipleship demands, how then shall we live? I know we are a man-centered people and we think it's all about us, but we are wrong. I love what the old Dutch Reformed theologian Abraham Kuyper used to say. Facing the humanism and the man-centered religion that was so prevalent even in his day, he stood before a group of men and he said this, I want you men to know what Jesus Christ is going to do when He comes back. He is going to stretch forth His hand and grasp everything that is and He's going to say, Mine, 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 mine! It's all mine. It's always been mine. It was created for me, for my glory, and for my good pleasure. And the only ones that are going to enter into the heavens are the ones that have realized that from the start. It's all about Him. For a lot in America today, Jesus... If I see one more Southern Baptist church with a sign out front that says salvation so easy a caveman can do it, I think I'm going to be thrown in jail. Blasphemy! So easy a caveman can do it. So difficult is our salvation that only God can make it possible. Do you think he's a flu shot? I could talk to most Southern Baptists and talk to them about salvation they'd say, don't worry about me, I done did that. You done did what? Well, I took care of that a long time ago. If you're not taking care of it today, you didn't take care of it a long time ago. The evidence that you repented unto salvation one time ago, a long time ago, is you are still repenting today and growing in repentance. The evidence that you truly believed unto salvation many years ago is that you're still believing today and even more. And the evidence that He changed your life is that He's still doing it. If He's not still doing it, He didn't do it to start off with. He says, don't offer me this stuff. 
We almost believe, since so many people seem to be ignoring the idea of God, that He's like some little beggar with a tin cup standing stranded on a corner somewhere, and if we at least throw our dime in, it's a lot better than anyone else. God is not poor. Tozer said this, and I agree, if every man on earth became blind, it would not diminish the glory of the sun and the moon and the stars. And if every person on earth turned atheist, it would not diminish the glory of God. He has no need of you. As a matter of fact, realize this, Satan and the angels fell and God sent them no Savior and they will go to hell. Our father Adam fell. And I want you to know, if God had never sent us a Savior and allowed the whole human race to go straight to hell, He would still be just and still be glorious and still be loving. You say, well, I've never heard such a thing. Yes, you have in this church. You just haven't been listening. He says, don't offer me this. And then he says, go offer it to your governor. Basically, in modern day phraseology, it would be this. Go offer your employer what you offer God. See how long you last. Offer even acquaintances what you offer God and see how long they remain your friends. Offer God what, offer your family what you offer God and see how long you have a family. You see, missions, we can get excited about missions, but do you witness to the guy sitting down beside you? you? Get all excited about doing things in the world, but are you doing what you're supposed to be doing here? Because missions begins here. If I were to hand out a piece of paper right now and I were to say to each one of you on the first part of that sheet, I want you to write down your calling and your ministry in this church. Then on the, the second part of the first page, I would want you to write down everything that you've accomplished this year through your local church serving and ministering. And then on the back, to write out your plans for next year on how you're going to give your life away in the context of this local church to serve Christ and the nations. For most of you, I'd have to receive back a blank page. Because one thing the church growth guys have got right, it's this. 20% of the members of a church do 80% of the work and 80% of the people do nothing. They come, they attend. Imagine if I was your employer and you came to me and I said, okay, let me see your sheet of paper. And I look up there and it says, I said, you've, you've done nothing this year according to you. You, you have no calling. You say, that's right, but every time the door of this factory is open, I let you know I'm here. I look on the back set pot. You have no goals. You have no desire for the next year. You're not going to produce anything. No, I'm not, employer, but I promise you this. Every time the door of this factory is open, I'm going to be here. That's basically the mentality in church today. Every time those doors are open, I'm going to be here, at least on Sunday morning. You're not called to congregate in order to watch other people minister. You're called to congregate in order to be fed by the Word of God and worship and then spend the rest of your week ministering unto the people of God and for the glory of God. Yeah, but how can I do that with all the other activities I have? If anything gets in the way of serving the kingdom, even your right eye, pluck it out. Or your right hand, cut it off. But i got so many activities. Look at this. How are you raising your children to do this right here? You'll carry them all over for soccer and football and this and that lesson and gymnastics and everything else. But you're not teaching them to serve God. You're not preparing them for the day they will stand before Him. You are making them just like you. And that's terrifying. You want them to have educations and titles and this and that. You want them to play ball and do this and that. Do you not know that your children are going to stand before God and on that day, everything you've taught them is going to burn up in the fire. And they'll be left a beggar. And it will be because of you. What are you teaching them? Your life is so full of activities, you can't give Him anything. You can't give the church anything. 
And don't talk to me about world missions unless you're going to talk to me about this local church. Because God's only got one thing going and it's not a denomination and it's not a program. It's a bride. And that bride manifests itself in this church. Oh, my dear friend, every part of your head to your feet is wounded. Every part of your family is busy and frustrated. How long will you have to do this? Why will you not repent and throw away everything and serve the Lord? I'm not saying this to hurt you. I'm saying it because it's true. Were you as excited about this missions conference as you were the football game yesterday? 